Good morning, good morning, and good morning. Good morning, everybody. Okay, listen. Um, I took on a project that was way bigger than I actually thought it was when I started it. And I couldn't turn back because I had already posted about the drinking journal for today. So yeah, the drinking journal for today, I, listen, I have no idea what's about to happen right now because um, I read, oh, y'all, it's a, it's a mess. When y'all see the slides, you're going to see why. I usually have like two or three slides, you know, and like a little news article we talk about. 
this one is a book and it's really different because of how I arrived at getting to this book. So, okay, we're going to talk about it. How, with however many people are here. All right, let me do my little chat. Thing. This is me on, I think I created this on Friday sometime. Was it Thursday or Friday? I forget. I feel like it might have been Thursday when I created this. So this is from Thursday. This is when I had my hearts around my name. A little backstory. I enjoy with the little hearts around my name, but I used to be jealous because I couldn't get at it. You couldn't at me in other people's chats and i was like girl you want to be at at it i wanted to be at it hey boo i see my boo my boo is here um so yeah i took the little hearts off and i added um the stuff at the end because i saw that i could at other people in other people's chats who had emojis at the end i just couldn't at myself or other or other people couldn't add me and i couldn't add anyway y'all know i just be over here trying to make my youtube space a little different you know i'll be trying to upgrade it when a girl can i am going to hope and pray that today is the last day of struggle streaming depending on how long we are here today i need to go pick up my laptop i got a laptop a girl got a new laptop to go get and she gonna stop using her desktop, which was from 2016. It's a little old. <laughs> and I took all the specs to the Geek Squad to figure out why was I struggle streaming. And they're like, we don't know why you struggle streaming. You shouldn't be struggle streaming. Like you gotta, everything looks, I, I took them my Wi-Fi specs from Xfinity, my modem specs and all of the computer. And the only thing they could think was that the processor on my desktop is out of date. And you can't update a processor. So I needed a new needed it, girl. I needed a new computer. Um, Foxy says, Good morning, everybody. If is the chat gonna be lit? I don't know if the chat listen. I'm so nervous. Y'all already know I get nervous going live. Why I don't know. I just put a whole video of myself up dancing. Did y'all see me dancing yesterday? Y'all listen. I have not danced in what two years now, <sighs> and my people came. Everybody couldn't come. A few, a few of my people had 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 COVID, and they they kids got it, and they couldn't come. But we got a little group chat, you know, where we be talking. And they couldn't come, but the people who could come came. We were at one of my former dancers' dance studio, and y'all for two hours. That little clip I did yesterday was after two hours. <laughs> we was in the studio for two hours trying to get our life together. Oh, Rusty Dusty, he's trying to figure it out. We had so much fun. It was, it was just so much fun. And they hated my song choice. And I love my song choice. And they complained the whole time, but they indulged me. And it was the best day like that I've had in such a really long time. So if you watch my little video from yesterday... Thank you. I appreciate you. Um, yes, please go subscribe to Foxy and Family. Hey, I see you are a family. Please go subscribe to I See You Are a Family. Can y'all hear that little music I got in the background? I'm trying to set up. I can't. So today I feel like I got to be in like for real teacher mode. And I can't teach in silence. This is just not going to happen. So I don't know if y'all can hear the little music in the background. I can hear it. And that's going to hopefully help me. I'm so nervous about what I'm about to show y'all. Like, I'm so nervous. I'm going to show y'all, though, because, you know, I don't care. But I am. I I, I kind of summarized the whole book for y'all. <sighs> Up until, and I was so nervous I wasn't going to be ready. It took me until, like, 1.20 to finish it today. I was up at, like, 2.30 this morning early trying to finish it. Um, Foxy and family is giving love. Hey, boo! running late and out of breath <laughs> good morning Saki thank you for being here you know you you already know girl you already know I see you our family is giving love to Foxy please go subscribe to my boo Saki speaks Dr. Saki if you're nasty Hit the like button when you get up in this joint, people, because we got some learning to do today. And I'm going to make.
make y'all uncomfortable just a little bit. Please make sure you like the video on your way in. Thanks for tuning in, hun. Saki and Foxy, you guys are my only two mods, you know, because, you know, the whole mod thing is new to me. I don't know if y'all saw the little premiere I tried to do with my video yesterday. I had the night bot running and the night bot was a terrorist. <laughs> The night bot, I think the night bot put McClurg in timeout forever, like forever and ever. So I think I fine tuned the night bot commands. If y'all want me to run the night bot to test it out, y'all let me know by the time I get to the bottom of the chat to see if he's going to stop being a terrorist or not. And we're going to be, we're going to assign it a gender for sure. It's a he. I see you, our family is giving love to Saki. Foxy is giving love to Saki. They can still add you. You just won't be highlighted and you will have, but when I add, like if I try to add you, Saki, I have to just type in your name. It doesn't automatically pull up your information. It doesn't automatically pull up your username. That's why I just will be like, I just type in Saki. I don't even put at Saki because nothing comes up when I do that. So I wanted to be able to be pull upable, pull up, you know, a girl want to pull up <laughs> um, and you will have to just look for your name to see who is speaking to you. It might change mine back, but I doubt it. Most folks don't do it. Um, I see what uh, Saki is giving love. Yay. Child, that night bot be tripping. Listen, Saki, it was terrible. And it was such a short video. Like, I couldn't fix it. <laughs> it was only like a five-minute video that I was showing. And the night bot, listen, all the emojis and stuff, the night bot was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was sitting up here trying to watch the video with everybody, and the night bot was killing my friends. And I was just so sad. I was like, no. It was terrible. It was terrible. Okay, so look, do y'all want me to run it? I'm going to run a night bot. Let's see what the night bot does or doesn't do. I know how to quickly remove the night bot if it's a problem. Okay, let's see. Is the night bot showing itself yet? I don't see him yet. I saw the night bot losing his mind. Oh, yeah, on the, in, the, in, the re, in the rewind, yeah. The night bot was terrible. I was so sad, too. Oh my goodness. And I didn't know what to do. And it took me forever to disable the night bot. And I was just, I was like, okay, I need to explore what, what, like, I didn't know what the commands of the night bot was. Like the, the, the settings of the night bot be like, no emojis. No, you can't even capitalize words in your chat with the night bot. I'm like, dude, you are not helping here. We just trying to have fun and do things. And you over here killing the chat. Yeah, it was terrible. It was five minutes of terrorism. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to get started because my goal, I have no idea how long we are going to be here. I am going to let the chat lead the discussion to a certain degree. Um, <clears throat> when I show y'all how many slides are here, yeah, I feel like I, I so I'm a last minute scholar. I am the kind of scholar that will wait until an assignment is due before I do it. And I still will probably do a good job. But baby, I be taking, I used to take no dose in college. I had to stay up late on some nights. I kind of, I didn't, I didn't treat this that way, but it felt like it because I literally had to get through a whole book in two days. And I, that's all I had was two days to read her book. Um, yeah, that night bot needs some serious tweaking. Okay, I, I have him activated right now. So let's see if he does anything. But I got y'all here. And yeah, I need to figure out um who else I can give a wrench to that I can I don't I don't I don't know anybody. So I, that's trustworthy. So it's not that I don't trust everybody. I love everybody, but listen, I'm just saying it take a minute. I've been Saki, you know how you you know how you scroll through my um thing? I've been watching you for a minute, sister. I've been watching you, Saki. I've been watching your moves and non-moves and moments of silence over the foolishness, and I've appreciated all of it. 
that's why I was like, girl, where you going? I'm going where you going. You ain't where if you go, I'm going. I'm going with Saki. Wherever Saki go, that's where I go. All right. So I am going to share my screen. And let's get into some things. Okay. <clears throat> so Leading the Discussion is a book by a uh, author named Bell Hooks. I'm not going to even lie to you guys. I did not know who Bell Hooks was until she recently passed away. Um, and that's when I knew who she was. So I used her, this um, image as the thumbnail. Sometimes people try to destroy you precisely because they recognize your power, not because they don't see it, but because they see it and they don't want it to exist. And this is what she wrote. And I titled this, Black Man, Why Do You Hate Us So Much? And the reason that I titled it this way is because of some things that I've already told you guys about that I've seen in the Manosphere space. But more, more specifically, there are two guys in the Manosphere space who keep getting called out on I don't want to say anything derogatory, but they keep getting caught out on their um, foolery. Let's use that word. That's a good that's a good word. Foolery. That's a good word. All right. So Saki is laughing at me because she know I was stalking her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and yes, Bell Hooks was and will always be that buttery hotness. Yes. May she rest in power and peace. Listen, she taught me some things. She taught me some things. If you guys are interested in all of it, I know everybody doesn't have the patience to read a, a book at from times. I've looked at the education of the average American citizen and I understand the average gravel. I do not let that lead anything that I do. I believe everybody has the ability to rise. And so here we are on my drinks and journal day. Yes, I got the water on deck, which I drink in a day. I got my water. I, I did, however, put mine in this cute. Y'all see my cute little mug? One of my students gave me this for Christmas. Choose love, hope, and kindness. So I'm I'm trying to be cute with my drinking today on my journaling. I put my little water in here. And instead of me have to slug it out of a bottle, I thought out of my cute little mug with a straw would be more apropos. So anyway, I know I understand that everybody doesn't have the tolerance to read an entire book about feminism and black people's plight in society. And so what I did was I read the book for you and I summarized it. I don't know if you can see this number right here, y'all. This presentation has 48 slides. Jesus. And I couldn't make it less. So let's see how this day goes. All right, my why or the why of how I decided to, to tackle this topic today. So there was a conversation had on another YouTuber's platform. Um, they, this is their conversation. I, this is just literally, I'm not playing any videos today of anybody's anything. And it is going to be what it's going to be. Their, the why that I'm doing this is because this is what two men of color now, they can identify as anything other than black. They can identify as whatever it is, but they are men of color. Two men of color are having a conversation, and this is the conversation. I mean, hey, bro, if you want to date a bunch of Shaniquas, go for it, said Myron Gaines in the clip while speaking about the dating app Black. Me and Fresh, Walter Weeks, aren't really down with the brown like that, being night Riders. Sometimes if they're red bone, but I mean, in general, me and Fresh don't dabble in the dark, if you know what I mean. Y'all, the way they say it, it's even worse. In response to the outrage from the resurfaced video of gangs and weeks talking about how they don't like dating black women, they spew more racism and misogyny saying when it comes to dating and your personal preference. So they're using all of these qualifiers as a personal preference. All of these, this derogatory highlights that I did in that first paragraph, they're trying to say that's preference language. 
No one bats an eye when women say they want a man that's six feet tall, makes a certain amount of money, blah, blah, blah. Those are considered preferences. That is a preference. If I want somebody that's six feet tall, if I stop there and put a period on it, that is a preference. If I put a comma and say, but somebody that's five foot eight is, and I add context to that, that is derogatory misogynistic language, period, point, and blank all day long. But if I say, hey, man, I don't date black girls like that. Oh, God, how dare you? My mom's black. My sister's black. Like, bro, we just have a preference. Chip, chip, chip down weeks. Gaines went on to ask if he hates black women, would he continue to bring black women onto his show? Why, yes, you would. Because the shows that you bring these young ladies on and give them liquor in front of a camera with microphones in their faces are your highest rated videos. So, yes, you would continue to bring them on. A black woman on the panel immediately tried to interject and he shut her down, disrespectfully motioning to her with his hands and saying, let me finish. This is a description directly from their podcast. They consider themselves to be the world's number one men's podcast. We provide the truth to females, fitness and finances. And they have over 500,000 subscribers. Okay, I see a thing. The Nightbot didn't do anything to get rid of that troll, did he? What is the Nightbot doing right now? Because I see the troll. Foxy, do you know how to get rid of trolls? You got to click the dots and get rid of them if you can. I still see them on my phone. Oh, I see it was deleted. Oh, you did it. I see you. I see you, Foxy. I see you over here. Look at Foxy modding. Go, Foxy. Y'all, Foxy learning how to mod. Yes, Foxy. All right, so... <clears throat> That is why I want to have a discussion and I wanted the discussion to be centered in not what about isms and personal feelings and emotions. I wanted the discussion to be centered in um, research. I wanted the discussion to be centered in um, scholarly um, writing. So that's how I have 48 slides. So I'm, I'm going to apologize. If you guys can't stay here for the whole thing, I totally understand. But I'm going to get through this because this is really important to me. And it's important for me to have it in the universe. It really is. All right. So this is a continuation of the why. I want to, we need to understand the difference between preference and prejudice. We need to stop assigning characteristics to an entire gender or race. I prefer black men personally, but please believe Brad Pitt in that movie, Troy. Sha. And I don't have to say nothing. I'm sorry, y'all. I do pop my mouth. I'm working on that. I know that's not a good look on the mic, but it is what it ain't. But listen. Just because I prefer black men and Brad Pitt, child, I don't have to say anything disparaging towards black men to qualify that I, you know, I, I could look at Brad Pitt and be and smile. Just saying, you know what I'm saying? Like, and so that's what's happening in a lot of these spaces. We get disqualified in general because you have a preference for something else. There's absolutely nothing wrong with having a preference for another race for debating about your preference, but to qualify it and to negate your mother, your sisters, your aunts, the women who surrounded you with love, hopefully, not necessarily, but hopefully, there's a lot of black men who hate their mothers. There's a lot of black men who hate black women. And I had no idea, none, none, you guys. And I'm, listen, I'm learning too, because I just didn't know. Ladies and gentlemen, 
If you keep running into the same type of people and you keep getting results that you don't like, like if you keep inviting the same type of women onto your podcast and they keep exhibiting the same behaviors, you probably should change the type of women that you invite onto your podcast. Unless you're inviting these women onto your podcast because you know they are clickable and viewable and they are worthy of dollars. So you don't like these women, but you will use them. That is a problem for me. You don't like us, but you're willing to use us. And it's really sad that Joe Budden, oh, Joe Budden was the sound of advice to these guys. Y'all, when Joe Budden is speaking out and speaking up for black women, ladies, protect your peace, protect your peace. Stay out of spaces that don't grow you, and young ladies, stay off of any platform that aims to demean you. Look at a platform before you go on the platform. Look at the platform. What is their history? What are their most viewed videos? They might talk about fitness. They might talk about finances. But are those the videos that are actually getting the most views? And if those are not the videos that are getting the most views, and you see the videos that are getting the most views are derogatory in nature toward you, stay off of those platforms. Stay off of them. It is not worth your your uh whatever y'all be doing on on fan, only fans. Is it only fans? Fans, listen, whatever y'all trying to get y'all subscribers up to do, it's just not worth it. You will become a 30-year-old, hopefully. You will become a 40-year-old, God willingly. You will become a 50 and a 60-year-old if heaven permits. And that information that you are putting out there is forever. It's not like it used to be when I was growing up. That stuff is forever that you are doing. And it is not worthy to put money into their pockets to allow them to demean you. And absolutely, take it from somebody that knows, don't cam up and drink. <laughs> okay, let me look at y'all. Let me look. Let me look at the chat. Girl. The, the the Russians are here today. They are here today. Get them, Foxy. Get them, Foxy. All right. Foxy read some of the book. Yes. Foolery is a good word. It is a good word. Oh, Saki got that one. Um, Foxy said, but they are not dark. Are they not dark? One of them. They're both. They're both. Both. Not one. Both. One of them is a little darker than the other, but they're both men of color. Um, yes, Foxy, you did get the troll. Go, Foxy, with the wrench. Ew. <laughs> I see you are a family says. I appreciate that education. Thank you. I see you are a family. Listen, this one is going to be long and it's going to be rough to get through, but we're going to get through it. And like I said, I'm going to let the chat lead. If you guys got something to say, I'm going to stop and look at it immediately. Otherwise, I'm just going to get through it because it's a lot. Um, it's nothing wrong with eye candy. That's all I'm saying. I, I, Brad Pitt could be more than eye candy, child. Still. I'm just saying, child, girl. <laughs> um, Yes, you know how to hide the trolls now. Yes, I see you are family. Girl, listen, I don't know why these trolls. It's all, I don't even know why. They be here. Like, I, but I let, oh. Y'all, I got more than 100 subscribers now. Ah! But I still can't change my channel name. Now, I'm mad about that, too. I don't know what's going on with that. YouTube is tripping because you're supposed to be able to change your, instead of all of them letters and numbers, when you get 100 subbies, you're supposed to be able to change. And I read on somebody's board somewhere that they still haven't been able to change their name. And they have like three, 400 subbies. So I don't know what's up with that. On my original channel, that I switched all this stuff over from, I did have a, a name. So that name got grandfathered in. But since I moved all of my personal content onto this channel, I didn't get grandfathered in with being able to pick my own name. So 
Yeah. All right. I learned a new word during all of this research. In sale. You guys ever heard of this word? In sale? Definition of in sale. A person, usually a man, who regards himself or herself, it still can be a woman, as being involuntarily celibate and typically expresses extreme resentment and hostility toward those who are sexually active. The term incels emerged from a Reddit group in which tens of thousands of users, most of them young men, commiserate about their lack of sexual activity, many of them placing the blame on who? Women. Child. In recent years, a number of these men have identified as so-called incels, short for involuntary celibates, an online subculture of men who express rage at women for denying them sex and who frequently fantasize about violence and celibate, celebrate mass shooters in their online discussion groups. And some of them have been become a part of this red pill, blue pill, black pill, white pill, manosphere space. In sales, dudes who are mad that they couldn't get certain chicks. So they turn into hot boys online and they decide to demean these types of chicks. That's basically what's happening over there. All right, did I go to the section of you? Yeah, Saki, I went to the, I went in back there and where my channel name is, there should be, so on my original pay channel, there's two boxes. The box that YouTube assigned me and then I was able to create my own name on my original page. When I transfer all the content from my, original page onto my organized chaos page it kind of started me out as a newbie i guess under the new rules and so it only lets me see the assigned youtube stuff and it never it still hasn't given me the ability to add my own name so i don't know what's up with that yes in sales are trash hold on for a second y'all i got my little heater on at my feet because my house is bipolar and now i'm hot okay i'm back um yes in sales are trash you mad because you can't get laid make that make some sense they sell toys for that now congrats to over a hundred subbies i know listen it be the small things y'all already know i get excited about stuff I got excited yesterday because Houston, Houston Bread, is it Bread? I think it's Houston Bread. HB. HB showed up in my chat before the premiere started. I was like, oh my gosh. Like, y'all, 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 I cried when Saki showed up. I just be extra. I saw a hundred. I was like, oh, that's a milestone, girl. <laughs> yes. NCLs are involuntary celibate because they don't have the looks swag preach or personality to be considered attractive by the opposite sex or even the same sex you better preach a whole word sucky hmm they may have increased the number to 300 or something who knows youtube yeah youtube you know youtube is a little janky mm -hmm. yeah i know i got my car mix mm -hmm. youtube is a little janky all right, <clears throat> let's keep going, y'all. We got we, we still got 44 slides. All right, so let me introduce you to Bell Hooks because you might not know who she is. I did not until I read her book. Her uh, birth name is Gloria Jean Watkins. She was born in 1952. She just recently passed away December 15th, 2021. She's an American author, a professor, a feminist, a social activist. And the focus of her writings is on the intersectionality of race, capitalism, and gender, and what she described as their ability to produce and perpetuate systems of oppression and class domination. She's published more than 30 books and numerous scholarly articles. She's appeared in documentary films and participated in public lectures. She taught at institutions including Stanford University, Yale University, and the City College of New York before joining Berea College in Berea, Berea, Berea Kentucky in 2004. And I believe she has her own college at that college. Um, what we are... Uh, 
Digging into the day is her book, Ain't I a Woman? There is a copy of the book in the description of this video. Click on it and read it at your own leisure if you'd like to. And this book was published in 1981. I was alive in 1981. Bumping the hits with Bates class of 86. I was in elementary school in 1981. All right. <clears throat> So this is her. Why. I'm just I'm just I just took a screenshot of the exact words from the book. This is her. Why? Hold on. Let me drop that. Eight years ago, when I first began researching this book, discussions of black women and feminism or racism and feminism were uncommon. Friends and strangers were quick to question and ridicule my concern with the lot of black women in the United States. I can remember a dinner where I talked about the book and one person in a big booming voice, shocking with laughter, exclaimed, what is there to say about black women? Others joined the laughter. I had written in the manuscript that the existence of black women was, uh, has, was often forgotten, that we were often ignored or dismissed. And my lived experience as I shared the ideas in this book demonstrated the truth of this assertion. So that is why I wanted to use this book as the, dis the, the basis of our drinks and journal today, because she is writing from a scholarly perspective of a lived experience. And she's not just going to focus on a certain time period. She's going to take us all the way back to slavery. And that's an important idea to think about. We didn't just get here. We didn't just land here. There is a history that some of us don't even know anything about. There is a history that some of us weren't educated about in school because they don't really teach this part of history. So here I am showing up on your screen on the YouTube places. All right, let's keep it moving. Silence of the Black Woman. Slow down. All right, I told you guys the chat was going to dictate and Foxy just put a comment in the chat. I was a junior in high school in 81. Yeah, so a lot of this stuff I'm about to talk about, it should ring t true to you unless you weren't really engaged in the politics of uh, civil rights or you might not have a lot of knowledge about some of the uh, history of the repressiveness of slavery. So we're about to get into it. Let's get into some things. All right, silence of the black woman. Historically, we have been silent. We have been asked to deny parts of ourselves for the greater good of our country, our family, and our legacy. Remember, we do have a history of what happens here stays here. We don't talk about that. Things happen to us, things happen to our children, and we never talk about it. We have failed in majority to speak our truth. That is one of the reasons why I created my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is a hodgepodge of all types of things. I am not just a one type of person. I am a person of a lot of different things. And YouTube is a place where I can, since I don't have my dance studio anymore, I can push all of my creativity into this space. And it kind of acts as a journal for me as well. We were taught to submit to accept sexual inferiority and to be silent. True freedom allows us to be all that we are, to explore every aspect of our being and to do so from a place of, I couldn't think of what my of was when I wrote this, but now that I finished, when I started this, but now that I finished it and I'm ready, I feel like to explore every aspect of our being and to do so from a place of being informed that's how i will finish that sentence now that i'm finished with this we need to be informed we need to not have arguments with people who can't hear us we need to have communities where we can come together and share our being our wholeness all of who we are we have messy parts of us we have knowledge parts of us. We have fun parts of us. We have artsy parts of us. We have, we, we just have so many parts of us. 
And we need to share these parts of us because there's younger girls looking for us. There's younger girls who are lost in this space and all they have are people demeaning their presence. And all they are being told is all that they are worthy of are clicks, views, dollars on certain platforms. Are all of that and more. So Saki says, I was a freshman and the youngest one in the school to boot. Oh, you got double promoted, Saki? Did you get double promoted, girl? They tried to double promote me and my mama was like, no, ma'am. You will not be double promoted. So she sent me to a gifted and talented school instead when I was in a fifth grade. I could have been in a sixth grade. <laughs> exactly, says Saki. My channel is a hodgepodge of everything that I want to share. And because I'm multifaceted, my channel content is, will be as well. That's all I'm saying, Saki. Be, listen, the other day. First of all, Saki. Saki. I be trying to catch you. You know I go to sleep. And then when you be posting that you're going to be on early, I be like, cool. I get a break. I can dip in and listen to Saki. And then I be looking and it be like, move back. Move back. I be like, <laughs> I be like a little baby over here. Remember when everybody used to drop the baby bottles when you first went over and created your page or channel? I be just sitting over here like, <sighs> and I saw you going on tonight at 1255. I was like, I ain't going to be there. No, I'm going to be in the bed. But at about 3.30 in the morning, I'm going to be on replay. <laughs> hey, HB. Hey, boo. Welcome to the chat, HB. Okay, wait, look. I got things that I be trying to do when I be multitasking. But I already know. I'm probably sure. And maybe not. Okay, wait. All right. All right. Foxy says, I am the same way. I have so much to say and still trying to do it in my way. Yeah. And that, my, that's what I'm trying to figure out over here. Like, how am I going to do the things that I do in this space? And I'm just starting to do them. You know what I'm saying? Like today's, I'm nervous about today's because it's so much. Saki is giving love to HB. Yes. 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 HB showed up in my chat last night and I was just taken aback. I was like, HB is in my chat. Y'all, HB got a subscriber that be trying to get at me. She told me, she she calls me a cougar. Ma'am. <laughs> ma'am. No, ma'am. I'm not a cougar. I'm scared of the young boys. Listen, I tried. Listen, did I tell you? I told y'all. Y'all know I'm about to be distracted for a second. I told y'all I got that app. What's that app? Um, what's that app? We was talking about oh Bumble when we was talking about the the, the uh, Lauren. I got that app Bumble. Listen, y'all. A younger guy, you know, I, I said hi to him. I thought he was cute, and so then he 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 hollered back at me, and then you know we exchanged numbers, and then we started texting each other. Y'all, I was at a work meeting in person in the summer. And the boy sent me a picture. Can you imagine? Like, I don't even know. I, we never went out on a date. We never even talked on the phone in person. We just text each other a little bit over a couple of days. And the man, the, 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 the young man sent me a picture. Y'all. Yeah. He sent me a picture of all of the things of the thing. <laughs> Of all of the inches that existed <laughs> on the thing. I was like, oh, is this how young boys date? They just send you pictures of the thing. And then you make a de decision if you want to be involved in the thing. <laughs> I was like, no, sir. No, sir. I can't do the thing. I couldn't do the thing. <laughs> okay, let me focus. I'm going to go on before that. I just had to set it that way because I don't want to. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate you because I'm trying to catch you live. I got to run out of here. Don't go get my laptop today. But, you know, I will ear hustle. Y'all, please subscribe to Houston 
bread. It's not bread. Houston bread. Please subscribe to HBR. It's a good time over there. I be learning all of the things. I pop up in Houston and I just listen. I be like, what are the young people talking about today? And I just be learning about what the young people talk about today. I, Hey, Houston, you taught me the word gay gay. I didn't know what that word was. I was like, oh, and I had to keep listening because I'm like, what is gay gay? I understand what gay gay is now, thanks to Houston Bread. Listen, Houston, and then listen, oh, I was there last night. I was kind of in the clouds, y'all. But that versus battle with you, oh, let me drop um Andrea's channel too. That um that 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 versus that gospel versus last night with Houston and Andrea was absolutely everything. I literally fell asleep. I think I was awake long enough to vote for three rounds. And then you already know it was a wrap. It was after eight, it was close to nine and it was over. But I woke up and I finished it. It was so good. It, Y'all, Houston, do it again, HB. Do it again. That was absolutely amazing. The vibe was just so good it was the best hb is giving Saki love on this sunday hey sis Saki says please support your girl i would appreciate it thank you hb says don't mind her girl this is a good topic i'm trying to stay focused hb the chat distracts me and i said i started and said i was gonna let the chat lead the discussion it is a topic. okay let me focus i'm gonna focus but i gotta eat and everybody saying, shouting out, HB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the young man with the thing, yeah, yeah. It was something. It was, I was, I was in an auditorium and it was, and it was people around me. And I didn't think that that thing was going to be on my screen. I was like, I almost dropped my phone. I almost cracked the screen. I was, oh, excuse me, excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Absolutely not. Yeah. It was deep. Oh, Lord. Was that that girl? Girl. Saki. Saki. <laughs> HB was talking about, they was talking about things on her, uh, on her thing one day, on her, uh, on her uh, podcast one day. And I was like, you know, there, she was talking about how ugly they were. Girl. I was like, Saki, it was beautiful. <laughs> And it was next to a ruler. He had a ruler next to it to show me the inches on the thing. Girl. Girl. Okay, I'm focused. I'm going back. I'm going back. Yes. All right. So, Intermary Church Terrell, Sojourner Truth, Anna Cooper, Amanda Berry. Smith and others who blew long years of silence and began to articulate and record their experiences. And so here we are. There are five chapters that I am going to color codedly get us through together. Sexism and the Black female slave experience, continued devaluation of Black womanhood, the imperialism of patriarchy, racism and feminism, the issue of accountability, black women and feminism. Let's go. Oh, I don't know, Saki, if that's the same one. I think so. You know what my cash app is. So it might be different on my about page. That's right. I need probably need to, I probably need to update my about page. That's right. The one you have is right. All right, sexism and the black female slave experience. All right, you guys, I'm going to get through the bullet points and then I'm going to go to the chat. Bullet points, chat. Bullet points, chat. That's how we're going to do this because it's a lot. Institutionalized sexism is also known as patriarchy. Couple that with racial imperialism. Slavery was labor. Black females are not identified as valuable. Black males cost more than black females. White immigrant females were encouraged to engage, you know what I'm talking about, with black males so that they could produce new workers. 
1664 in Maryland, there was an anti-amalgamation law passed to discourage sexual relationships between white women and enslaved black men. They was already doing the things together. Offspring, and this is why, because the offspring of a white woman was free, right? So they didn't want a white woman to have a black man's baby because that would create a free child. They needed labor on the plantations. They needed labor. And so because they needed labor, they had to create a space and stop the white women from breeding with black men. And they encouraged immigrants. And then they would decide to breed black women. All right. Um, I'm going back into the chat. Yes, the gays. New word. Um, please subscribe to um, Andrea Nelson, you guys. She is an awesome content creator. Um, the gospel verses was all of the things. Yes, Saki. I, it was the it was the perfect way for me to nod off. Like it really was. It took everything in me, and I saw everybody in the chat, and I was like, I can't talk in the chat because I'm tired. I just was looking and listening as long as I could. And then when she would say vote, if I could wake up, I would wake up and vote. And then I would just like, it was just so good. Um, the energy, yes, HB, the energy was beautiful. It was just awesome. It was awesome. Um, yes, I, can, I think you you know what my cash app is. What you know is correct. I'll fix it on my page. Um, yes, I see you are our family. Thank you for subscribing to HB. HB is the truth. HB comes on early. Like I literally get on teaching my first class at like 9.50 and I'll be like, HB been on for like 20 minutes. Let me see what they talking about. All right, Foxy just subscribed too. Thank you guys. Yes. Um, HB has a comment about the, all right, so yes. So the worth of black women has been reduced systemically since we were brought here, HB. At the end of the day, we've been unvaluable. We've been unvaluable to society since we were brought here. Women on, black women on slave ships were not a threat. A lot of black women on slave ships were allowed to roam about the slave ship at the leisure of the white men on the ship. And they were forced to be the leisure of the white man on that ship. If they were pregnant before they left Africa, they were there and a lot of them had to deliver their babies on that ship in whatever types of conditions that existed. If they got impregnated on that ship and came to America, then they came with a baby. It, it made the baby, especially if it was a man, more valuable. All right. <clears throat> Sexism in the Black female slave experience continue. Black female slaves would eventually become breeders. The offspring of Black female slaves, regardless of race. So even if a white man raped a Black slave, a Black enslaved female, that baby was automatically a slave. So it took the dynamic from the white women having these babies they were, they were discounted now because they, they designed a program, they designed the system to keep Black women under while using what they produced to value themselves, to create value for their land. Um, this increases the, the market value. This will finally, being a breeder is what increased the market value of the female slave. White male slavers did not fear the enslaved African woman and dominance over them was absolute. Traumatic experiences of African women and men is only the initial stages of the indoctrination process of transforming a free African into an enslaved African American. Black enslaved women were forced to assume a masculine role. So when they talk about when black women are so masculine, we have not had the option some of us to be anything other than assuming the masculine role in society. It's been forced upon us since slavery. We had to do the same jobs as men. Um, HB is thanking Foxy. 
Saki says, HB and D, we were considered valuable only in terms of our ability to reproduce and create more slaves for selling or working. Yep. Yep. And yep. And now these young black girls are going on podcasts because their only value is to have a drink and be demeaned by men of color. Make it make sense. Stop, ladies. Don't go there. You are not valued there. HB says, Saki, this is why I take issue with people who sum womanhood up to just reproducing. It diminishes our full personhood. Absolutely, HB. Absolutely. Foxy says, facts. Yes. All right. The same job and carry a baby at the same time. Child, Foxy, on your back. Baby on your back in the fields, making it happen. All right, let's keep going, y'all. We are continuing in the same chapter. Black enslaved women were forced to assume a masculine role. They labored in the fields. They were forced to do the same thing that black men, black enslaved men did. They had to plow. They had to plant. They had to harvest crops. And a lot of times they worked longer hours than the black enslaved men. Also, they were domestic labor inside the house. They were under constant surveillance of white owners. They were nurses. They were cooks. They were seamstresses. They were washerwomen. They were maids. So they were everywhere. Inside the home, it was very likely, I don't even know if the word worse is a word that should be used in this context because you had overseers on the plantations that were constantly watching black bodies. Like black bodies being watched and monitored and what they decided to do has been our lived experience since being uh, forced here, period. All right, Saki says, HB, exactly. While uh, appreciate the ability of women to reproduce, we are so much more than that. And I hate that women have bought into the notion that a woman is less than if she's childless. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to get into the things. We're about to get into all of the things. Let's keep going. The enslaved Black woman could not look to any group of men, white or Black. Listen to this. Since enslavement, an enslaved Black woman was on her own out here. Nobody protected her against sexual exploitation. White women blamed and brutalized Black enslaved females for being raped by their white men. White women would blame and brutalize an enslaved black woman for doing the thing that the white man did to her. Historically, black women have had no protection in America. Although black female slaves often boasted of their work ability, they longed to be treated with the same regard and consideration that they believed was due to them as a woman's privilege in a patriarchal society all right what is that is that a troll yeah saki hit that that was interesting c a la trey aka mr research now that's an interesting troll hmm. saki says <clears throat> they were wet nurses child child because they were breastfeeding white babies and not their own. Yep. So our milk strengthened their babies, but our bodies were not our own, nor subject to our own governance at all. They're, they're, we, it, we were at the whim. We were at the leisure of white men and white women. Nobody was able to help us or protect us. Nobody. All right. We're moving on. It looks like to chapter two. No, 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 no. Yes, it is. I think it is. So this is coming directly from her book. It's a different color, so it has to be, right? Yes. Continued devaluation of Black womanhood. While Brown Miller successfully impresses upon readers the fact that white men brutally assaulted Black women during slavery, she minimizes the impact that oppression. So Brown Miller is one of the um, references that um, is used in this book. 
She minimizes the impact that oppression has had on historical context of an institutionalized crime during slavery. In so doing, she fails to see that the significance of the rape of enslaved Black women was not simply that it deliberately crushed their sexual in integrity for economic ends, but that it led to a devaluation of Black womanhood that permeated the psyches of all Americans and shaped the social status of all Black women once slavery ended. One has only to look at American television 24 hours a day for an entire week to learn the way in which Black women are perceived in American society. The predominant image is that of the fallen woman, the whore, the slut, the prostitute. Remember, this is 1981 when this book is released. And all of those images have turned into spaces on the internet. I don't, I don't even know what's on. I'm not even gonna lie. I don't know what's on TV anymore. I have no idea. But I see all of these things right here in 2021 on the internet. The predominant image that I see of black women online is a fallen woman, a whore, a slut, and prostitutes. That's what they big up online. All right, learning to love myself. Good morning, Shine and welcome. Hey, boo, learning, do you have a channel? If you do, can you let me know? Because I would like to, um, you know, just give you some love. That's really important to me. Um, I see you, our family is giving love to learning. Learning is giving love to Saki. Foxy is giving love to learning. Saxy says, I'll be back, y'all. I'm listening, but not modding. Okay, no problem. Um, happy Sunday, Foxy and family. All right, let's keep going, y'all. The devaluation of Black womanhood continues today. The sexual assault after slavery of Black women was so prevalent that Black women and men wrote articles in newspapers and magazines pleading for the public to take action against all offenders. When Black people urged the white public to aid them in their struggles to protect Black womanhood, their appeals fell on deaf ears. Systemic devaluation of Black womanhood is a calculated method of social control that still exists today. They have transformed that thing, they have packaged it, and they are selling courses on it, y'all. They are selling courses from people who are not even qualified or educated in this type of work. They are packaging and selling courses about how to date black women. Based on what? They base a lot of their talking points on statistics without a story to tell what those statistics actually mean. It's dehumanizing and it's degrading. And when I hear, all, I hate being on, listening in to somebody and they want to win an argument based on a statistical conversation. That irks me to my core. I'm like, numbers are valid, but what's behind the numbers is always interesting to me, always. And to just base a whole conversation on numbers, it's just not, it's, it's not, it's not real. It's just not real. Black men have vested interest in maintaining existing barriers which discourage black, female, white, male marriage, for it eliminates secu sexual competition. Black parents admonished daughters not to submit to sexual assaults by white men, but did not encourage them to reject similar, similar approaches from black men. I'm going to read that one more time. Because we got a lot of this happening still in families, uncles, boyfriends. Black parents admonish daughters not to submit to sexual assaults by white men, but did not encourage them to reject similar approaches from black men. Sexism causes all men to think that they can verbally or physically assault women sexually with impunity. And that's the problem. 
All right, Learning says, no, I don't have a channel. Oh, it's okay. All right, Learning, I just wanted to give you some love. I still appreciate you being here. You are such a blessing, Saki. Speak. Listen, Saki. Listen, I'm a, I'm a, I don't know. I got things in my head. I'm gonna let them stay in my head. Um, enjoying the subject. Thank you, Learning. Thank you. I appreciate you. All right. Yes. All right. Let's keep going, y'all. We getting there. We getting there. We almost halfway there. Almost, but not quite. In early 20th century, many Black women attempted to shift the focus of attention away from sexuality by emphasizing their commitment to motherhood. So that's how we get that narrative of you need to have a baby. You got to have a baby to be valued. It's not society's fault. We wanted to... I think black women, since we just have been lost, right? We, we They were labeled at this time. Y'all know this, Aunt Jemima, Sapphires, and Amazons based on existing sexist stereotypes of womanhood. A positive step wasn't recognized, which was that black women were fulfilling their roles as mothers and economic providers. So they were being mothers and they were working. That wasn't recognized. Ignored in all of this were poor and widowed white women who were doing some of the same things. So all of the backlash that we get for being some of us educated, some of us doing, you know, momming and and having multiple lives outside of a man it the target has only been on black women there were poor widowed white women who never got attacked never got attacked for doing the things that we had to do um wait do you have good things or bad things in your head girl let me know <laughs> Like, you know you my boo. It's all good things. I'll be trying to think of things and I'll be trying to organize the things and be like, what, what can I do? What can I do? It's all good things. You know, it's all love. I love me some sake. It's my big sister. All right. All men do not naturally. Listen to this, ladies. All men do not naturally want to provide for the economic well-being of their families. They don't. The structure of marriage in a patriarchal society is a system of exchange, men providing economically, and in exchange, women provide sex, housekeeping, and nurturing services. That's the society that was actually set up that a lot of Black women have not been allowed to participate in. And many, not, not all, nothing that I say today is all. I don't like alling things or alling people. It's not all. This is some. In many homes, Black men who are employed are not eager to give their money to their wives and their children, and then they become resentful. Surveys of groups of women from all races and classes who attempt to get child care payments from ex-husbands will provide ample evidence. I got my hand raised. When, when men talk about child support and then they talk about, um, you know, the prenups and all of that, I wonder statistically how many women actually don't get child support or how, ever, how, how many women actually don't even get enough child support to actually have a meaningful contribution to raising their children and how many women don't even see the father of their children involved in their children's lives. So this is bigger than black women being just, this is, we have systemic problems in society. And, and some people like to package that and whittle it down to something this big. We have systemic problems that have been around since we got here. Black women being matriarchs was an image created by white males. This label has had the greatest impact on the consciousness of many Black people. The independent role Black women had to play in the labor force and family was perceived as unladylike. And you'll hear a lot of that unladylike language 
from some of these manosphere men. Like women shouldn't worry about education. Women should focus on the men. Black men have weaponized the matriarchy myth to ju justify their demands that black women assume a more passive, subservient role in the home. Some black women were eager to identify themselves as matriarchs because it seemed that they were finally seeing acknowledgement of their contribution to their family. It gave them privilege. Some black women correlated, I am the matriarch of the family, privileged position. It was not meant to be, nor is it a privileged position because it is a image that was created by white men to devalue black women. All right, Foxy says, yes, it is bigger than what we see. A much deeper dive is needed to understand. Girl, that's why I got 48 slides. <laughs> Let's keep going. Black women as the matriarch. This will further perpetuate the black woman as being masculine, domineering, having Amazonic creature features, the ability to endure hardships. I don't know if you guys have heard this. I hear it a lot about how black women don't get taken seriously at the doctor's office, how black women in labor, the, the, the death rate of black women having babies. I know they talked a little bit about Serena because she's a star. She's not the only one when she gave birth to her daughter. We are deemed to be strong and we can take pain and hurt and keep moving. The ability to endure hardships created a narrative of unladylike, strong, and believed to have subhuman strength. We must struggle. Independent spirited. We were taking jobs from Black men. We were demasculating Black men. We are passive. We're long-suffering. These are the meanings behind the word matriarch. The word matriarch was not given as a positive. It was given to be demeaning. All right, we on chapter three, y'all. We doing good. The imperial, ugh, I can't even talk right. Let me, let me have a sip right here, girl. The imperialism of patriarchy. Patriarchal power, the power that men use to dominate women is not just the privilege of upper and middle class white men. It is the privilege of all men in society, regardless of class or race. Black leaders have been unwilling to acknowledge black male existence, black male sexist oppression of black women. They do not want to acknowledge that racism is not the only oppressive force in our lives nor do they wish to, compl to complicate efforts to resist racism by acknowledging that Black men can be victimized by racism, but at the same time, act as sexist oppressors of Black women. Let's read that again. They do not want to acknowledge that racism is not the only oppressive force in our lives. We all know what racism is. We all know that racism exists. We all know that racism is the fabric of America. Nor do they wish to complicate efforts to resist racism. So they don't want to get caught up in the racism part by acknowledging that black men can be victimized by racism because we all can be victimized by racism and Black men can also act as sexist oppressors of black women, which is what we are seeing in Manus, a lot, not all, in some manosphere spaces. Black women working outside the home have contributed to supporting patriarchy. Black men weren't able to free them from the labor force. So this is black women being upset because black women wanted to participate in society the way that white women were participating in society. And black women, a lot of black women were denied that ability to have that type of balance. 
And so they became hostile, angry, contemptuous, bitter. Black women wanted breadwinners. So that's how we get this dichotomy of all behind all of this, the shield of uh, racism and suppression and oppression is patriarchy. And at the end of the day, the patriarchy system of America was set up for men to succeed. Initially, white men, rich white men, to be exact, initially. But then as rights were given down the line, black men would be included and black women would continue to be left out, even by white women who wanted to have rights. The imperialism of patriarchy continued. <clears throat> the rage of working black women. E uh, this was equa has equated manhood with the ability of men to be sole economic providers. Well, that was not possible in the early days. They felt they feel cheated and betrayed by black men who refused to assume the role of being the breadwinner. Some black women have labeled black men as selfish, lazy, irresponsible, and they have been emasculating black men. This assumes that black men find their identity through work, though, and I don't necessarily think that they do. This also assumes that black men are personally fulfilled by acting as breadwinners, and they might not be. So we're making some assumptions. There's no consideration given for the jobs that Black men do that are time-consuming, uninteresting, and energy-draining. Because remember, we are trying to get to a place that white women have in society. Black male hostility towards the white male power structure. Black men were angry at the white male power structure, but they wanted to be a part of it. They have always wanted to be a part of it, and they still do. They were eager to gain access to the power. Rage and anger are less, cr less critical and more reactionary that they have not been allowed full participation in the power game. I don't even know what that says. Rage and anger are less critique and more reaction. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. Rage and anger are less critique and more reaction that they have not been allowed full participation in the power game. Historically, they are most supportive of male subjuga subjugation of women. They hope to gain recognition of their manhood by demonstrating their dominance. Publicly proclaim that they have subjugated Black women and that the Black man was a real man because he could control his woman. Black political activists of the 60s. They saw Black women as a move to gain recognition and support for an emerging Black patriarchy. Many of these leaders espoused Black power while choosing white female companions. They informed real men that you demonstrate your power by dating whomever you please. And you'll hear a lot of those same talking points in some of the Manosphere spaces. They wanted to set up a new Black subculture. And again, I believe that is exactly what is happening in some spaces um, in our social networks. White men responded to this favorably. You will be surprised at how many young white men are tuning into a lot of these Black. There's one guy, um, I'm not going to mention his name. His initials are DS. He is a Black man who is very angry at Black women. And he, when he talks, he sounds like he rages and he absolutely hates his Black mother. And it's a really sad and scary space. And he has a lot of white men who tune into him and listen to him and applaud him. White men and women couldn't identify and or sympathize with black exploitation for economic gain or understand demanding reparations, but they could relate to the desire of black men to assert their manhood. That's why a lot of them will tune into some of these manosphere spaces because it helps feed into what narrative they already have about Black women, especially coming from another Black man. Men of all races in America bond on the basis of their common belief that a patriarchal social order is the only viable foundation for society. 
the, the black male quest for recognition of his manhood in American society is rooted in his internalization of the myth that simply by having been born male, he has an inherent right to power and privilege. When racism prevented black people from attaining social equality with whites, black men responded as if they were the sole representatives of the black race and therefore the sole victims of racist oppression. The effects of oppression was never one-sided. Black men and women both have historical trauma in our DNA. This is directly from the book. Y'all have to excuse my little scribbly scrubbly at the end. I didn't want to go into the next paragraph, so I just scribbled it out. Black men have been sexist throughout their history in America. But in contemporary times, that sexism has taken the form of outright misogyny, undisguised woman, woman hating. Cultural changes in attitudes towards female sexuality have affected male attitudes toward women. As long as women were divided into two groups, virgin women, who are the good girls, and sexually permissive women, who are the bad girls, men were able to maintain some semblance of caring for women. Now that the pill and other contraceptive devices give men unlimited access to the bodies of women, they have ceased to feel that it is at all necessary to show any consideration or respect. They can now see all women as bad, as whores, and openly reveal their contempt and hatred. As a group, white men expose their hatred by increased exploitation of women as sex objects to sell products and by their wholehearted support of pornography and rape. Black men expose their hatred by increased domestic brutality, white men also, and their vehement verbal denouncement of black women as matriarch, castrators, bitches, and all the other words that come into their heads. That black men should begin to see the black woman as their enemy was perfectly logical given the structure of patriarchy. In many black communities, young men coming of age feel that they must show their male peers that they are fearless. They are violent. They want to exert a public uh, assertion of masculinity. They want to sometimes repress others. They are sexist and some of them are abusive. There has always been a greater emphasis on the violent attacks of Black. I missed the letter A right there, y'all. I'm sorry. I was typing fast. Of Black men in American society <clears throat> as it diverts attention away from white male violence. I'm going to read that part again. That's important. Kind of like the um, when they want to change talking points and when we complain about like maybe, you know, um, the danger that cops might represent or, you know, us being um, sometimes lynched. The narrative is, you know, black on black crime, you know, what, they want to look at statistics, you know, people do things where they live. That's just. That's just human nature. You, wherever you live, those are where the things happen. But there has always been a greater emphasis on the violent attacks of black men in American society because it diverts the attention away from white male violence. <clears throat> male violence against women has been increasing, not just physical violence, but verbally. Verbal. The verbal abuse online is real. Arasaki says, this is the reason why you have a young black male that approaches a young black female. And when she rebuffs his advances, he and his peers think it's funny when he hits her in the face with the, I didn't even see that Saki, but I know it exists. I know it exists. I've seen some terrible things happen. I've seen somewhere online, there was a young girl who did not want to be bothered with 
this guy that approached her and she politely declined his advances and he got a gun and he did damage to her. That was his response. So you can't take rejection. Your ego is so fragile that you can't take no. Nobody ever told you how to just, like it's a, just keep it moving. Like there's somebody for everybody maybe and just keep it moving. All right, the imperialism of patriarchy. More women than ever before are in America's workforce, not because of feminism, but because families can't, I missed the letter A right there too, girl. Because families can no longer rely on the income of the father. Feminism has been used as a psychological tool to make women think that working is liberating. Listen. Despite any narrative spinning, work is necessary to live anywhere. And if a woman is living on her own, she has to work. Like what you want her to do? Overt misogynistic attacks on women have been occurring long before the feminist movement. And most women aren't even feminists. A lot of black women don't consider themselves to be feminists. And we'll talk about it. Because the feminist movement was really centered around white women's rights. Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, it's some, listen, it's some mess out here. All right. <clears throat> Young men rise to regard females as their enemy and as a threat to their masculine status and power. So young men, some young men think that women females are a threat the threat can be conquered though be violent be aggressive the aggression that these men of color have towards women and, and typically women of color helps to lessen their anxiety and it lowers the fear that their masculine power will be usurped so they just want to feel good in the moment. All right, this is directly from the book. The popular notion that black men desire white women because they are so much more feminine than black women has been used to place responsibility for black male desire for white female companions unto black women. I said this one time in one of my lives, Black women get blamed for the stuff we do. And we also get blamed for the stuff that black men do. How? I am to blame because your preference is a white woman. How does that become my fault? I've never understood the logistical thinking behind that. The gymnastics that your brain has to do for you to sit in that as your defense of why you do the things that you do in sexist terms if black men are rejecting black women and seeking other companions then surely black women must be doing something wrong since men are always right the truth is in sexist america where women are objectified extensions of male ego black women have been labeled hamburger and white women prime rib. And it is white men who have created this race, sex, hierarchy, not black men. Black men merely accept and support it. In fact, if white men decided at any given moment that owning a purple female was the symbol of masculine status and success, black men in competition with white men would have to try and possess a purple female. While I believe it is perfectly normal for, for people of different races to be sexually attracted to one another, I do not think that black men who confess to love white women and hating black women or vice versa are simply expressing personal preference, free of culturally socialized biased. Those were the statements that we talked about when I first started this live. Those statements 
are not just a preference. Those statements are trying to qualify, downgrade, and degrade Black women. Men are encouraged, I be going too fast. Men are encouraged to phobically focus on women as their enemy, blindly allowing other forces to strip us of our humanity. Sexism is a commodity to be sold. Remember, I told y'all earlier, these men with these super huge platforms have found a way to package up their talking points and sell them. These men aren't even scholars. They're not steeped in the work. They've just taken talking points and data and statistics and packaged it and are making money off of it. They have been brainwashed, the brainwashing of men. They feel that personal identity, worth, and value can be obtained through the oppression of women. The oppression of women is the ultimate weapon by which patriarchs keep men in states of submission. Our human experience is very complex, you guys. It's complex. And you cannot have a debate, a complex debate with anybody if they are not willing to peel the layers of the conversation back. What's really sad is that Black males can date whomever they desire. Uh-huh. They can have a preference. But the moment a black woman does the same, there is a label slapped on her back by black males and even other black women. It's conditioning. Society has the male patriarchy, the white male system has set it up that way. The propaganda that we consume, commercials, liter like the things that we consume has set it up that way. It has set it up that men, not just black men, men have the ability to do whatever they want to do. But white women and, and black women need to stay in their white lanes and black lanes. Literally. The world literally makes its living off the pain, pleasures, ideas, novelty of black womanhood. Literally. Yet the black woman is barred from capitalizing off of herself. And those that are able are demonized to the. We get, listen, Saki, we have been demonized for having degrees. We have been demonized for having careers. We have been demonized from walking away from abusive men. It, if everything is our fault, like everything is our fault. And then the ideas that we do come up with, you can take those ideas, capitalize off of those ideas and continue to demonize us. No, nah, man. No, nah, man. That's why we here having a conversation, a historically based conversation. Hello, Real Dimples. How are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. All right, let's keep it going. We are in chapter, is this what is just Chapter four, four. How many chapters we got, y'all? Five, this is four. I think this is four. Racism and feminism, the issue of accountability. The inability of American women to understand racism in the context of American politics is not due to any inherent deficiency in a woman's psyche. It reflects the extent of our victimization. We've been so victimized and so conditioned to just see the world through this really narrow lens that we never took a look at what got us here. How did we end up here? Why are you so angry at me, Black man? Well, let's look at the history books. We've never learned this history. This history is not taught to us in any schools. And I know I'm a history teacher. It's not. No history books informed us of racial imperialism. American women have been socialized, even brainwashed 
to accept a version of American history that was created to uphold and maintain racial imperialism in the form of white supremacy and sexual imperialism in the form of patriarchy. All right. The truth is that it doesn't hurt hurt so much when black males and white people at large demonizes us. It hurts like hell when other black uh, gr- Saki. <laughs> this is the conversation that we really need to have. And I know you want to have it. This is the conversation that this is a whole nother conversation. But this is a conversation that we absolutely need to have. Um, it hurts like hell when other black women do it to each other and it needs to stop, but it's not going to, because some black women have decided they want to be a part of the, the, the boys club. And they're like, oh, we can capitalize off of black female pain too. Cool. I'll do all of the things. Why? Like When do we unite? When do we unify? When do we stop bad behavior? It's time. It's it's been past time. All right, everybody is giving love to real dimples. Foxy is affirming what Saki just said. And yeah, welcome, real dimples. Welcome. All right, y'all, let's keep going. We almost, listen, I'm... I I didn't think I was going to get it through it this fast, but this is what's up. I like it. I like it, girl. Keep going, girl. Read the book. Read the book. All right. In America, the social status of black and white women has never, ever, I'm going to say it again, never, ever been the same. So when one, somebody want to statistic you to death about what a white woman is doing versus what a black woman is finally able to do, don't buy into the statistability, the, the, the statistics. I was about to say statistability, statistic ability. Girl, I'm trying to make up words in my head and they is not coming out my mouth right. <laughs> do not, do not feed into the statistics of it all. As victims of racism, black women were subjected to oppressions. No white woman was forced to endure. White racial imperialism granted white women the right to assume the role of oppressor. I'm going to say that again. A black woman did not have this role, but white racial imperialism granted white women the right to assume the role of oppressor in relation to black women and black men and black men. White reformers did not feel political solidarity with people, and it was made evident in the conflict over the right to vote. This is where feminism of the black and white women crashed, this right to vote. White women demanded segregation in social spaces as well as the workforce. All right, Saki says, I was thinking of doing it today, but I need to gather myself and make sure that I am in teaching mode. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't have taught nothing yesterday. I was gigging. But yeah, teaching mode is a different space and not on a soapbox. So today I will talk about something else. I'm ready, Saki, when you are. I, you know I'm going to be there. I, and I hope I can catch it live. I like being live with you. Even though the the, the replay gang is, is still available, I like being live. Nurse Vicky! Hey, Nurse Vicky. Thank you for dropping in to our little lesson of the day. I appreciate you for being here. Everybody is giving you love. Saki says, hey, Vicky Boo. Foxy is giving love. Hey, Vicky. You guys, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe to Nurse Vicky. Thank you. All right, let's keep it going, y'all. We on page 3048. We're moving all of the things around. When the women's movement began in the late 60s, it was evident that the white women who dominated the movement felt that it was their movement. So the women's movement of the 60s was not a women's movement for all women. It was a women's movement for white women in their minds. In America, white racist ideology has always allowed white women to assume that the word woman is synonymous with white woman. 
non-white women are perceived perceived as others white feminists did not challenge the racist sexist tendency to use the word woman to refer solely to white women they supported it they wanted it they wanted all of the glory their unwillingness to distinguish between various degrees of discrimination or oppression cause black women to see them as enemies. And this is how, not that we ever were kumbaya because remember, we've never been on the level of white women in society, but the coming together was supposed to happen. The suffragist movement, it was supposed to happen and it did not happen because white women did not want to lose their place in society. Remember, I told you at the very beginning, we learned this at the beginning of the book. We, we might not have, y'all. We might not learn this to the end, but I, I'm about to tell you anyway, because I'm still a teacher. White women did not come up in society until enslaved people came here. I'm going to say that one more time. White women did not gain prominence in society until the enslaved Black human beings came here. That is when they got pushed up in society. All right, let's keep going. Throughout, throughout women's history as a paid laborer, white women workers have been able to enter the workforce much later than black women, yet advance at a much rapid pace. Racism ensured that the lot of white women will always be better than that of the black female worker. The emergence of black feminist groups led to a greater polarization of black and white women's liber liberationists. Many black women found an affirmation and support of their concern with feminism in all black groups that they had not experienced in women's groups dominated by white women. There, um, a lot of that, I can tell you, you things like sororities, right? A sorority girl, but things like sororities and fraternities, a lot of those organizations, even HBCUs, we didn't have a space in society for us, and so a lot of us had to create spaces in society to do the things that we thought we should or wanted to do to educate ourselves to have social outlets, and so we began creating our own spaces. All right, yes, Saki, please be live while we are awake. <laughs> Listen, we be struggling. We be trying to stay awake for you, Saki. You know we love you. She says she promises. Thank you, Saki. We appreciate you. All right, giving love to Vicky. White women only supported Black women with regard to feminism because we increased their numbers. Yeah, but we were never included. They just needed more bodies. They know our power and didn't want us to get into a position of power above them. No. And it wasn't, and and they were also angry that black men were going to get privileges that they didn't have, right? So they needed us to to come together in numbers to give them a presence, but they really weren't concerned with the things that concerned black women. Um, I see our family says, "Wow, we at slide thirty-five. I know, right? We doing good today. I see you. We are doing good. I'm so proud of us." Yes. Just in here learning. I'm learning and teaching too, girl. I told y'all, I just read the book. I just, like, I knew all of the things. I just never saw all of the things in one place. And it was nice to have this book to put all of the, the random things that I know. It was just in one place. And I was like, oh, this is like the perfect book. This was the perfect way to have this conversation. Um. All right, let's keep going. Racism is the barrier that prevents positive communication, and it is not eliminated or challenged by separation. Conflict between Black and white women began during slavery. It was the enslavement of African people in colonized America that marked the beginning of a change in the social status of white women. That's what I was telling y'all about. I hadn't gotten here. Here I am. Here I am. We have arrived. I'm going to say this part again. I thought this was so powerful. I highlighted it and I bolded it. 
it was the enslavement of African people in colonized America that marked the beginning of a change in the social status of white women. Prior to slavery, patriarchal law decreed white women were lowly inferior beings, the subordinate group in society. The subjugation of black people allowed them to vacate their despised position so they got to move out. The enslaved people got to move in and they became superior. So why would they ever want to help unite? Why? This is why. This is historical, y'all. This is the pieces of the information that is always missing. This is the context that is always missing from the bashing conversations about how Black women act, how we respond, how we come across, how we got an attitude about everything. This context is missing from every one of those conversations that I've listened in on. Throughout American history, white men have deliberately promoted hostility and divisiveness between white and black women. The white patriarchal power structure pits the two groups against each other, preventing growth of solidarity between women and ensuring that women's status as a subordinate group under patriarchy remains intact. The white woman was depicted as a symbol of perfect womanhood and encouraged black women to strive to obtain such perfection. The white patriarchal power structure pits the two groups against each other, preventing the growth of solidarity between them. All right, we are almost on the last chapter, y'all. We almost at the finish line. All right, last page for racism and feminism, the issue of accountability. Resolution of the conflict between black and white women. All, y'all see how I put that capital there? All women acknowledge that a feminist movement, which is both racist and classist, is a sham. Women are kept in bondage to materialistic patriarchal principles. Passive acceptance of the status quo, disengage from hostility, jealousy, and competition with one another that has kept us vulnerable, weak, and unable to envision new realities. This is the process of becoming. So this is how we undo what the patriarchal society has done to us. We have to become. This is the process of becoming. Refuse to accept the myths, the stereotypes, and the false assumptions that deny the shared commonness of our her human experience, that deny her capacity to experience unity and bridge gaps and allow change. So, Saki, when you talked about having that conversation, this is it. We have to become acceptance that American women without exception are socialized to be racist, classist, and sexist to varying degrees. All right. Foxy gave me my flowers because I am staying focused. <laughs> Thank you, Foxy. And then I see you are, I see you are, don't be acting like you know, don't, be, don't but you do, but still, but still. She like, I know you know, right? <laughs> White people, and more importantly, Black males shun the various facets or faces of Black womanhood, yet they capitalize off of the neck rolling, the linguistics, the body. Girl, they be trying to look like us. They be trying to buy the booties, buy the booties, the body shape and the overall ability of us to make it yes they capitalize off of our every move they capitalize off of all of the wonderful things that reside in us 
but yet they want us to be angry. They want us to, to, to have a bad rep. They want us to be uneducated now because there's too many of us that are starting to, to wake up. And now I'm not even just talking about like a college education, just educated about reality and life. And I feel like that's what today was about for me. Like, stop it with these, I just, the, 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 the talking points. They just floor me. I don't know why. I am a scholar. I understand the need for data and statistics. But I also understand the need to unpack numbers as well. There's information in the data and the statistics of it all. And there is a historical context behind all of the things that are happening negatively against Black women. And none of that is ever discussed. None of that is ever discussed. It's just like we should be where we want, where we should be. We should be where Black men tell us we should be. And we should be happy with whatever position they tell us we should be in. Well, how do... How, how, how did we get there? Were there? Was there a foundation laid for us to have arrived to that place? So far, it ha there's been nothing. There's been nothing done. Last chapter, straight from the book. Black women and feminism. More than 100 years have passed since the day Sojourner Truth stood before an assembled body of white women and men at an anti-slavery rally in Indiana and bared her breast. She bared her breast to prove that she was indeed a woman. To Sojourner, who had traveled the long road from slavery to freedom, the bearing of her breast was a small matter. She faced her audience without fear, without shame, proud of having been born black and female. Yet the white man who yelled at Sojourner I don't believe you really are a woman, unwittingly voiced America's contempt and disrespect for Black womanhood. In the eyes of the 19th century white public, the Black female was a creature unworthy of the title woman. She was mere chattel, a thing, when Sojourner Truth stood before the second annual convention of the women's rights movement in Akron, Ohio in 1852, white women who deemed it unfitting that a black woman should speak on a public platform in their presence screamed, don't let her speak, don't let her speak, don't let her speak. Sojourner endured their protests and became one of the first feminists to call their attention to the lot of the black slave woman who compelled by circumstance to labor alongside black men was living embodiment of the truth that women could be the work equals of men. It was no mere coincidence that Sojourner Truth was allowed on stage after a white male spoke against the idea of equal rights for women. Basing his argument on the notion that woman was too weak to perform her share of manual labor. That she was innately the physical inferior to men. All right, let's keep going. I see you are family is funny. <laughs> she said, and our hairstyles ain't more. <laughs> no, they're not. No, they're not. They're not, girl. <laughs> yes, Foxy, we are awesome. We are amazing. We done been through some things. We've been tested in a fire and we still here. 
we still rise. Rise, Saki, rise. Saki said, child, they be trying to copy those as well, girl. If they could copy the natural curl pattern of black women, they would do that. They've already done the butt lip thing and black fishing is real. We got a whole, whole Rachel Dollazel girl. She was a whole white woman living as a black woman. But now we did have some black women living as white women too. But you know. All right. We have the best DNA. That's why they try so hard to alter it. How's that working out for you? We still here. We still here. Girl. Facts. And we rise. And some of us are not down with your nibs that you want to spin about. But yeah, we having school on a Sunday. We have a little drinking. Drink some water. It's good for you. And then in our little chat box. All right. Anna. Cooper advocated social equality for women. Church black women articulate their own experiences and to make the public aware of the way in which racism and sexism together affected their social status. She believed that women could best serve her country by using education to enhance the sex role that had been assigned by her by patriarchy. She was aware that higher education would also enable women to explore worlds outside the traditional realm of home and family. I see my Wi-Fi is acting crazy, but my slide is up, so I'm going to keep going. Oh, y'all, we on 41 out of 48. All right, y'all. As Jim Crow apartheid threatened to strip Black people of their rights and achievements they had acquired during Reconstruction, it was only natural that Black female activists ceased to struggle over women's rights issues and concentrated their energies on resisting racism. Black women began fighting to prevent the lynching of Black women and men by mobs of white racists. So we couldn't even focus on us. We had to stop the lynching. Focus on improve the conditions of the masses of poverty stricken black people and provide educational opportunities. So we couldn't even focus on just the racism of it all anymore. We had to stop the killings, right? So we're not enslaved anymore, but Jim Crow is alive in America and it's taking us out. And it's especially taking a lot of black men out. So women are doing a lot of black things to try to help lift and educate and protect our black men. Yeah, here we are today being demonized. Between the mid 1920s and the mid 1960s, black female leaders no longer advocated women's rights. Black women disassociated themselves from the feminist struggle and focused on black liberation. They wanted full citizenship. Black men and women wanted entrance into the mainstream of American life. And to gain entrance, they needed to be conservative. They needed to assimilate into society. All right. Black women's organizations became depoliticized and focused on social affairs. They wanted to emulate the status of middle-class white women. These black women believed in social equality of the sexes, but learned to suppress their opinions. They had to suppress their opinions for fear that attention might be shifted from racial issues. They wanted to fight for freedom first, then they were gonna fight for women's rights. So they had an agenda. Okay, y'all, we need to be free because they keep killing us. And then once we become free, then we'll fight for our rights because the suffragists, they, they, that didn't help us out. So let's focus on this Jim Crow thing, being free. Then let's focus on getting our rights. Little did they know. Unfortunately, they did not foresee the strength of black male resistance to the idea 
that women should have equal status with men. So black women wanted to help liberate black people, all black people. And then they wanted their rights. They just didn't know that the liberating part was cool with black men. But the rights part absolutely was not going to be cool with black men. The 50s socialization of black women to assume a more subordinate role in relation to black men occurred as part of an overall effort in the U.S. to brainwash women so as to reverse the effects of World War II. So if you guys don't remember, the effects of World War II was all of the men went away to fight in the war and then all of the women had to start working back here at home to keep America doing what it was doing. And then when the men came home, the men was like, yo, what's up? We got it. Yeah, we don't want y'all to work in the women. And by this time, women are like, well, I enjoy working. Like, I want to keep working. The working woman, black or white, found it necessary to prove her femininity. She often developed two demeanors. I hear these things a lot um, in some spaces. There's a dating coach that got slammed about her masculine energy she brings a certain percentage of masculine energy when she's at work and then she turns her masculine energy off when she gets home and i was just like what so i guess this is trying to help me understand she often developed two demeanors a certain and assertive and independent at work versus passive and pleasing at home. So I'm guessing this type of language has transformed into masculine energy and feminine energy for today's narrative spinning conversations. Black women became, but, and this is why though, right? Like we get, we're, people are complaining about this, but we kind of didn't have a choice but to live in those spaces. We had to. Black women became obsessed with pursuing the ideal of femininity described in the media. Child, don't try to keep up with the media, girl. Girl, girl, the media is not your friend, girl. You cannot keep up with the media, girl. The media is here to brainwash you. It's called propaganda, girl. Let's keep going. Black women now became angry, wanting to pursue this idealized femininity. And this is a narrative that is exists in the manosphere. We're not feminine enough. We need to talk back. Um, black women now became angry, wanting to pursue this idealized femininity and began resenting black men for not aiding them in this quest. They measured black men against a standard set by white males, sole provider. In retaliation, black men openly asserted that they perceived white women as more feminine than black women. Meanwhile, both black women and black men are uncertain about their womanhood and their manhood. Dennis is asking a question. Why is feminism called feminism rather than equalism? Um, that I, I don't have an answer for that. Um, Dennis, I think I'm saying that right. But feminism dates back to the 1800s, 1900s. And it is just a women's movement. Um, there's a lot of things that centered around the suffragist, suffragist movement of women wanting to have rights. So feminism is a part of all of that movement that started at that time. So equalism I'm, it's probably just wasn't a word that they use and feminism does not mean equalism is that and feminine feminism just in my perspective isn't about like being equal in the term of being equal feminism is about understanding the human nature of all of us we are all human beings we all have a place in society and we should all be working together there should be nobody that is above or below anybody. If we come together and work together, that advances us as a society. And if black, women, black men and black women could get on one accord with each other, 
then we could advance ourselves together and stop tearing down each other. All right, let's keep going. Thank you for being here, though, Dennis. I appreciate you. All right. The notion that modern women were emasculating men had its origin not in the conflict between black women and black men over sex role patterns, but in the overall conflict in American society over its issue of sex roles. Black women became the target for many misogynist attacks on female independence, largely because of racist scapegoating. Sexist ideology was the core of the matriarchy myth. Implicit in the assertion that Black women were matriarchs, remember we talked about how being a matriarch was not positive. It was not set up to be positive. Implicit in the assertion that Black women were matriarchs was the assumption that patriarchy should be maintained at all costs and that the subordination of the female was necessary for the healthy achievement of manhood. So basically, in order to keep the men at the top of society, you always had to demonize something, right? And so since white women were kind of sort of taken out of the equation and black men were given rights, it left black women to be the scapegoat. Black male leaders in the 60s made the Black liberation movement from racist oppression, excuse me, synonymous with their gaining the right to assume the role of patriarch, of sexist oppressor. They were liberated to serve the system. Although the movement has ended, the system has not changed. It is no less racist or sexist. And this is my little summary. And I think I put this on the last page. I made it big. Be curious. Question everything. Just because somebody turns on their camera and they spout statistics to you and they tell you what you deserve and they tell you a narrative about somebody else, educate yourself. Do some research. Avoid entering spaces that don't grow you, that don't celebrate you, and th that don't add value to your life. We have all experienced historical trauma. We have all lived historical trauma. That historical trauma cannot be concentrated into a few talking points. It cannot. We have history that goes back to the first time period of enslaved Africans being brought into colonized America. And that trauma still exists. And whether you know your history or not, it doesn't mean that your DNA has not been impacted by that history. Everybody needs to become curious. Everybody needs to ask themselves, what I talked about in my last one, why? Why are these men so angry at Black women? Why? What is the root of that anger? When you see a podcast with women sitting around a table and men of color controlling the narrative, pouring the drinks, and arbitrarily kicking and demeaning women out of their studio. Stop entering those spaces, young ladies. Stop. They are monetizing off of your pain. Our pain has been used to become monetization throughout history, and it needs to stop. We have a story. We have a long varied story to tell and we cannot let other people tell our story we cannot let talking points be our voice we cannot be afraid to be all that we are while we are here 
Because if we don't speak out, if we don't educate each other and our youth, we will continue to perpetuate the historical narrative of the American patriarchal system that was set up to keep men, specifically white men, but to keep men at the top of some idea, ideological space or ladder or somewhere and to demean and put black women at the bottom. And the most hurtful part and the hardest part is when black men feed into that narrative and they don't protect black women and everything that they are. We are very complex beings, very. And that needs to be celebrated, not demonized. All right. Thank you guys for coming to my little, um, what do I call it? My little struggle stream. I had a little few struggle stream moments today. I appreciate you guys. We made it through 48 slides. Yeah. I'm excited. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you. I couldn't do this without you. I want to thank you for being here. I appreciate you. I love you. And I hope the next time I go live, I have no idea what it's going to be yet, that you show up for your girl. I appreciate everybody that tuned in. Everybody that's going to catch this on the replay. Thank you, Anne.